everybody and welcome back to another episode. Today, it's the Xfinity Series. They head to Dover. It's 50 laps, $122,000 to the winner of today's race in the one main, one main financial 200. We have once again a different paint scheme for this race. I love, I love, I always love to change it up. Every race, I try and get a different type of paint scheme for the kind of race. We won the truck race just an episode ago. Can we go two for two today in Dover, Delaware? We are first in points after 10 races. This is the 11th race of the season as the pace laps begin. Ryan Sieg has been dominant all weekend. He has also been awarded the pole for having the fastest lap in qualifying. And our teammate of Chase Briscoe is starting at the back after failing pre-race inspection. So, we would start P16 on the outside of Ross Chastain. Ryan Sieg in the 39 car led us to green. The green flight is in the air and we were back racing. You see the 15 car right in front of me and Austin Sendrick, remember we had that a big scuffle with him in Texas and Bristol. I get really aggressive off the restart. I take it three wide on the outside. I only gained one position there as Ross Chastain got around. And now we head into turns three and four. The zero is looking under us. We're the side by side with the zero. The zeros are going at it for the position as we head into turns one and two. I immediately try and get to the draft and make a move on Jesse Little, the winner at Talladega, and I was able to get to his inside. We headed to turns three and four. Noah Gregson running the high lane. You can see how much of an advantage the bottom lane is as we almost get clear of him as we're side by side down the front straightaway once again. So we make the move to the bottom of the zero car, and so far we've had a lot of speed in the car we've been making big moves as we're trying to get to the front. I knew it'd be a tough race against Ryan Sieg, who is very fast today. As we come off of turn two, four, we actually make a little contact with 51, going for the position. As now we're side by side with Jeremy Clemens for the position. We are able to clear him, and we actually get by Daniel Hemrick while we're in action there. But we come off of turn two, and a we hopped to just a few laps later where I got up to Ross Chastain. I was also able to make the pass on Justin Allgaier. Now we exit turn number two. So just a few quick passes there to get us more positions. We jumped to just three laps to go and we were running P7. And I got to the outside of Austin Sindrick. Remember about the scuffle we had earlier and I knew that I didn't like him so I gave him a bumper. I gave him the slam there. I door slammed him, showing my displeasure that we don't like him. But that didn't work in my favor. He was able to drive away a little bit with just two laps to go right there in the stage. But I would be able to get to his inside and get by him. We exit turn number two. Now on the back bumper of Riley Herbst and Michael Annette looking to make the pass. As we head into turns three and four, coming up on just one lap to go, we got to the inside of Riley Herbst. Out of turn four, we were side by side with him, taking just one lap to go right there. We dive into turns one and two. I was able to clear Riley Herbst off of the corner. And Michael Annette was right ahead of me. I was looking for the fifth position, trying to make the pass there. And I would be able to, as we get to his inside, almost. He almost cleared us and coming on the line, we would edge out Michael Annette for the fifth position in stage number one. So a very successful stage for us, but we would get right into the second stage, restarting P5. The last time we had a restart, we were P16. How well can we do on this restart? The green flag was back in the air. I get a big launch on the restart, so I decided to push the 21 of Anthony Alfredo, looking to make a pass on on the bottom lane, look, at, I was trying to use the lane that was preferred here in Dover, but we come off of turn number two. I was trying to stick to the inside of Brandon Jones. I was unable to, and he's almost clear of us, but no, we try and side draft, fight back on the inside lane. 
on the restarts. The preferred lane is the bottom lane. But as the run goes on, as you see us get on the apron a little bit, as the run goes on, the middle lane is where you want to be, and Brandon Jones was able to clear us off of turn number two. But I got a huge run, almost made the pass through his inside. I was able to get through his inside, you see Ryan Sieg driving away again. We were side by side for the position with Brandon Jones, still fighting for the position. We finally almost get clear, and yes, we get clear and drive away from him. Now we look, we set our sights onto Harrison Burton, who is currently running P3 as we head off of turn number four. So we jumped to just a few laps later where I'd easily be able to pass Harrison Burton, and now my sights were set on the 21 car of Anthony Alfredo with just two laps to go in the stage right there. I tried to send it in each corner that was where I had the most speed, and I was able to make runs on the car in front of me there as I made that lane work. And now I look to the outside of Anthony Alfredo. I was unable to get there. We come up on just one lap to go in stage number two. So I get a big run off of turn four. I look to the inside of Anthony Alfredo for the second position. Now we look on to Ryan Sieg, who's way ahead, just, just like he was earlier. And now we look to hold off Anthony Alfredo in the 21 car and we were going to be able to and we would come off the turn four and hang on to the second position as we get P2 at the end of stage two. So it's P5 in stage one and P2 in stage two and off of pit road we won the race on pit road. So now we're going to restart P1 on the front rows. The green flag was back in the air. Ryan Sieg who's had the most speed all day long is on my outside looking to try and challenge for the lead. We dive into turns one and two, I was able to clear him. And Brandon Jones had a look to the inside of Ryan Sieg as we came off of turn two. You see the bridges ahead of me, you're actually allowed to go up into those and watch the race from there. So that is a cool thing that Dover International Speedway has. Now as we come off of turn four, I'm continuing to try and hold off the two cars behind me. Anthony Alfredo actually was got got to the inside of Ryan Sieg, so they were side by side for the position, and I was gonna hold, I was gonna try and hold them off here as we head into turn three. I started to run my line, that darker line, right there, as we head down the front straightaway into turn one. I block Anthony Alfredo once again. You see how much bigger of a run I have into turn one, but they have the exit speed. They are still side by side. I keep blocking them evenly and that makes them stay side by side. I did not want them to stay side by side because that would make me have to block even more as I have to go down to the bottom lane and block Anthony Alfredo's run. As we dive into turns one and two again, I try and run the middle, but I had to immediately dive down and block Anthony Alfredo. I would be able to drive away, and as we head off of turn four, we just have 15 laps to go. And we head into turns one and two, and the caution would actually come out right as I was exiting turn number two. And now we would pit, we would take four tires, and that would screw us a lot because everybody else took two tires. We were good on fuel to the end, but we would reach our P12 trying to get back to the lead. And Brandon Jones was right on in front of us. I immediately get very aggressive trying to not waste any time as we are three wide exiting turn number two. But Brandon Jones would clear me and I'd fall back a little bit. I'd be able to clear, they would clear me and I would be able to get to their inside and easily make the passes with the fresh tires that I have. I was able to also get to the inside of the zero car and now we're side by side with him once again. We've been side by side with him a few times this race. But as we get now to the inside of Austin Sindrak, I almost cleared him and I did as he slipped exiting turn number two. I looked at the outside of Harrison Burton and this is where I struggled a lot. I was unable to get by these guys very quickly as I had to side draft Harrison Burton. I probably should have went to the bottom lane, but I decided to side draft and go try my luck on the top. This is where I had the most grip and the most speed. 
So I tried it out, and as we come off of turn two, side by side still with Harrison Burton. As we headed into turns three and four, I actually made a little contact with Ross Chastain. I was able to clear Harrison Burton, and I was trying to side draft Ross Chastain. Harrison Burton almost had a look of three wide down the front straightaway, and I almost get clear of Ross Chastain, and I do. Off of turn two, I finally get clear, and now my sights were set on Riley Herbst. So I close in on him. You can see how much faster I am with four fresh tires. Our teammate of Chase Briscoe actually made his way all the way up to P2. And now he's trying to chase down Ryan Sagan, but we get to the inside of Riley Herb easily clearing him. And now it's Anthony Alfredo just ahead of us. We close in on him with the draft. I wasted no try time trying to make the pass, and I was able to as side draft through turns three and four, and I was clear for the position. Now I was able to close in on my teammate of Chase Briscoe. I had a big launch off of turn two. I wasted no time, I got to his inside. And now I face Ryan Sieg, he was about 1.8 seconds ahead. And I was not focusing on Chase Briscoe as I immediately focused on trying to get to Ryan Sieg. And now we come to just less than two laps to go. Coming to the white flag right here, we head down the back stretch. I, I had given up at this point. I was pushing myself still, but then we hit the turn three before the caution comes out. That is exactly what I wanted, and now there's going to be a restart. Just like that, the field is stacked back up, and we're restarting on the outside of Ryan Sieg as the green flag is back in the air. With just two laps to go, Ryan Sieg spins the tires a little bit. We get a great restart, and now we clear him into turns one and two. Just two miles to go in Dover, and we lead them off of turn number two. Chase Briscoe, our teammate, looking at the outside of Ryan Teague. He's unable to get there. We dive in turns three and four. Once we see the white flag wave, the next flag will end the race. We've seen lots of cautions today. White flag, next flag ends the race. Can we hold off Ryan Teague? He started on the pole. He's been the fastest all day long, and now, I try and run the middle, it's where I've been fastest all day. He runs the bottom, he's right on my bumper. I have to go down and block, down the back straightaway for the final time. We head into turns three and four, I block the bottom. Ryan Sieg doesn't have a run for me, and as we come off of turn four, we're gonna be able to steal the win in Dover. So a, a great situation there for us at the end, a caution with two to go. And now it's time to do our burnout. <laughs> Right. I get dressed like it's prom night. I feed on lemons in a long light. They say I'm full of my appetite. Hell no. Keep on pushing like a dilla. Hell no. Keep on shooting Reggie Miller. Hell no. Go and give them all the finger. You gotta set the score right. Call it Hans and Ma. Night time wherever I go. I took a chance like I'm from Chicago. 100 plus in that mercy. A lot go. About to go. Hey, hey. Turn into that Congo. Woo! Win number four on the season for us in the Xfinity Series. There you see the points. Four wins. We are over 100 points above second place. Now, as Ryan Sieg was the dominant car all day, but we were able to get a very timely caution, make the pass, and there you see us in victory lane in Dover for the second time this weekend. We sweep the weekend once again. This time, there's no critics. More and more drivers approve of Jonathan Shoemaker's clean driving style. So that is what we wanted to see in the article. But next episode, we head to Martinsville for the Cup Series, our second hot seat of our career. Our goal is to get a top 35 finish. It'll be 125 laps and $177,428 to the winner of that race. We usually have some speed at Martinsville, but not too much. But now I have school coming up, so I will not be uploading Sundays and Wednesdays. It will be whenever I can get it out. I will try my hardest to get it out. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.